I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I want to pray for you. There is a strength and a stamina that is coming on your spirit, man. And I'm telling you, you will be turned into a sign and a wonder. I stretch my hands. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. This man wearing white, come. What do you do? What's your name, sir? A pastor. Please listen to my message, The Secret Place. I preach it right here in House on the Rock. Please get it and listen to it. But there is speed that is coming to your life. When you pray for you and something will happen to you now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Speed in life and ministry. Take that grace. You will never be the same. Speed from today, no more delay in your destiny. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Someone lift your voice in one minute and begin to declare upon your life. Lord, I will never be the same. Someone please pray. Please pray. someone pray that man there two of you come stand are you preachers you're men of god lift your hands in the name of jesus take that grace new dimensions in the spirit you will never be the same never be the same i release you new wells of power new wells of grace by the spirit of the living god may your churches be on fire for jesus may your churches be on fire healings miracles signs wonders salvation in the name of jesus christ hallelujah you'll be seated shortly please you know sometimes we do these things by the spirit this call please come and stand what's your name sir who is joseph what's your name joseph Are you a pastor? You are a pastor. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Take that grace. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Everything that has held your destiny down, except God is not God. In this conference, I stand by the God of my covenant and I declare, Sheke Pakatosiata. Whatever will not let you go must go for your sake this night. Hear me. I speak to you by the God of the heavens. Help them please. Help them. Whatever will not let you go must give way. Open your mouth in one minute and declare. This is a season of liberty. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Is a preacher praying. Is a businessman praying. Is a family person praying? Shepa kato sali bara hasiata. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. I want to teach for a few minutes now. We'll walk with the time, but I want you to be sensitive because whilst I'm teaching, the Lord is touching people. The Lord is healing the sick. The Lord is bringing restoration to men and women. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's discuss encounters very quickly. Job chapter 42. Please help them, help them. Just keep them maybe on their seats or somewhere. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. Let's get to scripture now. Job chapter 
42 and verse 5. If you can see it projected, please read with me. Ready? One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. I heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now you have brought me into a realm of encounter. In Exodus chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Moses, having run away from Egypt after killing one of the Egyptians, he was banished and he ran away. The Bible says he was sending his father in law's sheep, Jethro. Are we together? Then the Bible says that Moses saw a scenery that caught his attention. He said he saw a bush that was bunny and yet not consumed. It was God luring Moses into an experience that would prepare him to advocate the exodus of God's people. Then the Bible says, Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground. And then through a series of other encounters, he revealed himself as I am to Moses. He said, now on the strength of this encounter, Go to your half-brother Ramesses, who is now the Pharaoh of Egypt, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, the one you met in the wilderness, let my people go. When he went and met Ramesses, who was now the Pharaoh of Egypt, after communicating all that, you would think that Pharaoh would say, Wow, Moses, okay, go. He refused. And he said, who is this one that sent you? And Moses threw his rod as a token of that encounter. And Pharaoh laughed. He said, you are bringing this childish manifestation to Egypt, the center of wizardry. Janus, Jambes, come, show this man that this is Egypt. They threw their rods and they also became serpents. To cut the long story short, on the strength of that encounter, it got to a point where the firstborn of Pharaoh died and he had to release the people of God gave them gold, gave them silver did not even allow their bread to rise and he sent them with the outstretched arm of God your exploits in this kingdom I will repeat myself is predicated on your encounters but there are four levels of encounters let me run through them very quickly and the order of those encounters also matter. I'm going to be communicating them according to the order. Number one, very quickly. The first encounter that any man and any woman who desire to be used by God would have to go through is an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Write it down, please. No matter what else you encounter, if you have not encountered Jesus, the son of the living God, you have not begun your journey in the faith life. This looks simple and this looks basic. But if we do not help people, we will have so many people in church, but very few people who are sincerely born again. The first encounter in this order is an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Can I tell you this? Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is not just a wise sayer. Jesus is not just a spiritual leader. If you define Jesus by those terms, you do not know him. Who do men say that I, the son of man, is? And some said you are Elijah. Some said you are one of the prophets. He said, but you, what is your verdict about my person? And Peter, speaking by the Spirit, said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That means the revelation of the sonship of Jesus has to come from the Father. Listen very carefully. It is not enough to believe in Jesus. What you believe about him also matters. There are people who believe in Jesus as a prophet. There are people who believe in Jesus as one of those revered leaders. The Bible tells us, and from the authority of scripture we stand that Jesus is the son of the living God. 
it is important to understand he is not an archangel he is not one of the angels he is not just a spiritual being Jesus himself the Bible calls him the the express image of the invisible God the revelation of the father to us Jesus if you do not encounter Jesus you can still be in church you can write books you can even be a man of God but I assure you by the authority of scripture you are not saved for my Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved you don't give your life to the Holy Spirit you don't give your life to an angel no the the administrator of the life of God the advocate the mediator is Jesus the son of the living God please shout that name say Jesus an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God there are three blessings that follow this encounter very quickly if you truly encounter Jesus the son of the living God there are three blessings number one is access to the life of God this is the first blessing John chapter 3 and verse 16 a popular scripture says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten but now he's not his one and only begotten today he's the firstborn of we the begotten are we together he says he gave his one and only begotten that whosoever believes in him no prejudice no sentiments whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life the word everlasting is not a very accurate translation of the greek word zoe the greek word zoe does not just mean life without end for in reality everybody has everlasting life is that true? When you die in this physical realm, you do not cease to exist. The issue is location, not continuity of living. Those in hell are still alive. Lazarus and the rich man. Even when they both left the earth realm. So the life Jesus came to give us is not just everlasting. It's a quality of life. God's own life, not just the God kind of life. It is not the kind. It is the very life of God. Apostle John said, this is the record that God has given us the way eternal life. He said, but he designed the administration of that life such that that life comes through an encounter with his son. So that he that had the son had eternal life. So I know that you have the life of God by verifying whether you have met the son. If you have not met the son, you may have another kind of life. But it is not God's life. The first blessing of an encounter with the Son of the Living God is access to the life of God. Number two, the second blessing is access to righteousness. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Righteousness is the nature of God, it is very powerful. Righteousness is one of the things that man lost through the fall. Men like E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand before the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, and condemnation. But it's more than that. Righteousness is the very nature of God. Are we together now? Yes. When you are justified by faith, you have access to righteousness. It is righteousness that qualifies you to now be a partaker of that divine life. Because the condition to be a carrier of God's life is that you must have righteousness equal to that of Jesus. So he administers his righteousness. Justification by faith, the Bible says. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says, Christ has delivered us, redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us, for it is written in the Mosaic law, Cost is every man that hangs upon the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is not cars and houses. No. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. 
may come upon all those who believe to the end that them be justified now might receive the promise of the spirit through faith access to righteousness the blessedness of encountering the son of God and then the third blessing very quickly is access to what we call grace Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 a concept that has been so talked about but rarely understood access to grace what is grace is more than just unmerited favor Ephesians chapter 1 please and verse 3 this is the definition of grace Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us, the Bible says, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The grace of God is defined as every spiritual blessing, every possibility that is contained in God given to the saints only through the office of Christ. This is called grace. So the power of God is grace. The wisdom of God is grace. Speed is grace. Are we together now? The ability of the spirit is grace. Every spiritual possibility that is contained in God and released to the saints only through the office of the Christ is called grace. It's beyond that which is received as new birth. No. Grace is like the spiritual warehouse that contains all the possibilities that are in God. But the authorized channel for access is Christ are we together so when you encounter the Son of God you have access to his life you have access to righteousness you have access to grace in fact let me add one more one more that is so needed in our world today you have access to what the Bible calls the peace of God write it down this is what money cannot buy this is what education cannot provide. Listen very carefully. This is what wealth and fame and human achievements cannot provide. In fact, one of the dividing, the clearest proof that you have met Jesus is the peace of God. He said, peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. Peace. A state of restfulness. Even in the midst of storms, you are happy. For reasons that men cannot understand. Let me tell you this. If you have not experienced the peace of God in your life, depression will weigh you down to death. We live in a society today where people both young and old are adopting all kinds of diseases and infirmities. Teenagers are carrying high blood pressure because we have not learned the power of the peace of God. It is the peace of God that grants you grace to sit in the midst of plenty or little and still be happy, not defined by the things around you. The peace of God. That someone tells you your car was just stolen and you say, wow, that's not good. But not enough to hang yourself. Uh -uh. The peace of God. This generation needs to understand once again the power of the peace of God. The most accurate definition of wealth is peace. No matter what you have, if you do not have the peace that comes with it, you are really not blessed. We are just on point one. An encounter with the Son of God. That you get to that point where like the Apostle Paul, you have made peace with God and you have the peace of God. Peace with God means that you know that you are one with him, both in this life and after this life. You no longer are afraid of death because you have peace with God. But then you have the peace of God in your heart that shields you from the vicissitudes of life. So you laugh at storms, not out of a sense of irresponsibility. But you are unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. I believe in the peace of God. I truly believe in the peace of God. Please hear me. The Lord is speaking to someone. The way you are living your life, you are going to be depressed to death. You need to embrace the peace of God tonight.
Grace of God does not get you saved. No. Having a Christian name does not get you saved. Participating in church activity does not get you saved. The formula is in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10. The Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy heart, with your mouth and then with your heart, the Lord Jesus, verse 9 says, it says, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Somewhere before the end of this program, I'm going to make an altar call today. And there are many of you, the Lord is already speaking to you sincerely. You may be a sincere person, very well-meaning, but you truly need an encounter with Jesus. Can I touch on one more encounter for tonight? Number two, the second encounter that you need is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Write it down. We need this dimension of encounter in the middle belt. It is, it is, it is an encounter that is needed not just in Plateau State alone. The needle belt so desperately needs an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please look up. This is not about Pentecostalism at all. Please do not confuse what I'm teaching here. This is not some, some, some manifestation of irresponsible people. I'm talking about the genuine encounter because many have mocked the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have ignored his ministry. So even though we have preserved morality, we continue to labor in the flesh to achieve things that only God worked as an ordinary man for 30 years until the heavens were opened over him. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove. That became the beginning of his supernatural ministry. The first revelation of God in the Bible, the Godhead that was revealed in the Bible that we see operating was the Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is a Hebrew word, Tohu Abohu confusion and chaos and then the bible says and the spirit of god hovered around the face of the waters this is my bible there was no man in scripture from genesis to revelation not even jesus himself who was able to satisfy the father's desire outside of the participation of the holy spirit Here's how Paul puts it, speaking to the church in Corinth. He said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we recite it after every service, but now you hear it from the Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, the love of God and the fellowship, it's the word koinonia, the sharing together, the participation of the Holy Ghost. He says, let it be with you. Let it abide with you. The Holy Ghost, is the one who can turn ordinary men into signs and wonders. John chapter 14, from verse 16 to 18. Jesus himself is teaching now. John 14, from verse 16, please. He began to introduce them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. They had seen his invincible life. This son of a carpenter had now become a sign and a wonder. Healing the sick, raising the dead, multiplying bread. This man became invincible, single-handedly. He was responsible for the exploits of ordinary men. Here in Joss, there were mighty men and women who were raised. Ordinary people. Some of them were not educated. Some of them did not have any enlightenment. But they stumbled across this strange personality of the Holy Spirit. Until today, we continue to talk of their exploits, even upon the plateau. They left prophetic words before they went to be with the Lord. 
by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We talk in Nigeria about men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa. We talk about men and women like Apostle Babalola. We talk of men and women who did mighty and terrible things. Those men confessed themselves that they were powerless except for the Holy Spirit. You read about God's generals, Catherine Kuhlman, M.P. Semple McPherson, William Seymour, the white eye evangelists that turned their cities upside down. These men and women were ordinary people. Maria Woodward Eater. Very ordinary. And yet they met the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. The Holy Spirit is not some church emblem. He is a real personality that by faith and hunger, you can step into a dimension of relationship with him whose benefit can be proven in your lifetime. The Holy Spirit is not a preacher's advocacy. No. Hear me, Plato. The Holy Spirit is not for men of God. The Holy Spirit is for those in government. The Holy Spirit is for career people. The Holy Spirit is for family people. Don't ignore him. Jesus did not ignore him. When God sends you, Isaiah 48 and verse 16, he never sends you alone. Let me give someone a word of hope as we prepare to pray. When he sends you, he never sends you alone. The B part of this verse says, it says the Lord God and his spirit had sent me. The Lord and his spirit had sent me. Just because you cannot see him does not mean he is not real. The only way to understand the Holy Spirit is to understand marriage. When two people are about to get married, a gentleman and a lady, they ask them questions. Will you take this one? They don't even listen to what they are saying. They just say yes so that they finish the meeting. And the meaning of that is that there is a covenant that binds them. Watch what happens. That as soon as that lady becomes married to that man, she no longer bears her son name. She's under the influence of that man. Now watch this. Even if she were a cleaner and she marries a CEO, she becomes a CEO's wife immediately, not later on. What you think or don't think is irrelevant. Are we together now? Let's say a billionaire or a millionaire is in this place and the wife just walks up here and says, I donate one billion. Whether she discuss with her husband or not is their issue to settle at home. As far as we are concerned, the journalist will narrate it this way. His eminence or his excellency or his whatever, represented through his able wife, donated one billion. Is that true? That means the wife never went alone. She went and carried his name. She carried his reputation with her. And even though he may not like what she did, he has to defend his reputation because he's her husband. It will be irresponsible of him to leave his wife. Listen to me. Are you understanding what I'm telling you now? So she's now called Mrs. His name. And on the strength of that, she can make decrees. She may not have up to a million naira in her account. Yet she will make decrees that are bigger than her size, trusting his reputation to defend it. Hear me, this is what happens with our ministry with the Holy Spirit. We are ordinary people in ourselves, but you are that bride. There is a faithful husband that backs you. Man of God, don't go to that crusade ground alone. You will be disappointed. There is a betrothal. There is a marriage that has happened. When you speak, you don't speak alone. When you cast out devils, they obey because the jealousy of your husband is defending your statement. Hear me. 
The secret behind the mysterious results that we produce. Make no mistakes about it. It is not the strength of the flesh. Jesus came to Nicodemus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are results that are not within the realm of man. You cannot produce such a result. So when I stand here, I am a man in the physical, but I am a bride in the spirit. There is a jealous husband. Walk with that consciousness and you will step into a life of signs and of wonders. Walk there as a career person. Walk there as a commissioner. Walk there as a governor. You are not just sitting down and writing. Spirit of the living God, your namesake is at stake here. I receive wisdom. I receive guidance. How dare you look at someone on a wheelchair and tell him to stand up. By what strength? How dare you look at a destiny that has been tied for ages, sometimes before you were born, and dare to announce in a moment, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the secret. Because he had anointed. The word anointed means ordained. He has legitimized my operations. Just, you are not weak. You are only weak when you are alone. Plato state. You are not weak. Africa, it is not the color of our skin. It is not our educational limitation. It is our, res our resisting and neglecting the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, Plato. My life is proof as an inspiration that if the Holy Ghost holds your hands, he will take you to the nations. He will defy all the laws of men. Is God blessing someone? Someone come, any come gentlemen. Watch this. This is me walking alone through life, confused. I come here and they say you are not this tribe. I come here and they say you are an African. I'm so limited. And then I come and hold his hands, the Holy Ghost. I hold his hands and go back to that same business. I hold his hands and go to ministry. While I'm preaching, he's with me. You are just not seeing him. So when I say in the name of Jesus, blind eyes open. It's not just my mouth. There is the jealousy of the spirit. His assignment is to see that Christ is glorified in your life. And he will shift anything to make sure that Christ is glorified. Let the weight of your glory Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the ways of your glory fall. Listen to me. Dear man of God, you may have eloquence and oratory. But if you do not have the spirit of God, you will still be disappointed. Dear civil servant, you may have your certificate and your training. But if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are bound to have a plethora of frustrations. Dear family man, you may be a responsible husband and a father. But life requires more than that. Even demons know. There are certain results that the moment you see it, it's a revelation that that man is not alone. Occultists know this. Non-Christians know this. You cannot produce results beyond a certain threshold except God is with you. I was stupid enough to hold his hands and say, Holy Spirit, I may not have what it takes. I may not be an American, respectfully speaking. I may not be a European. I may not conform to the standards that men have put, but I'm ready to hold your hands. Someone, God is speaking to you. You need to take the Holy Ghost serious. You've been having board meetings on church growth, 
board meetings on increase. Thank God for those things, but nothing will replace the power that his presence brings. You can fake power, you can't fake his presence. The reality of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? He changed my life when I met the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God can take you from anywhere to anywhere, from anything to anything. Don't give me the excuse of your background, believe me. Don't give me the excuse of tribal sentiments, not when the Holy Ghost, if it is the genuine Holy Spirit, He will turn your life into a sign and a wonder. This is not a preacher's talk. He will bring beauty and glory out of your life. You will walk in dimensions of extraordinary results. Just when men think they have exhausted all that can come from you, then he comes with another dimension. You will never be able to do ministry without the Holy Spirit. Plato said it will take more than formulating policies in addition to that which the members of parliament are involved with. Hear me. I speak to you by the Spirit of the Lord. As a territory, we need to one more time say, Maranatha, come. Spirit of the living God, come. Beyond the Pentecostal phenomenon, come. Come to our government. Come to our members of parliament. Come to the business people. Come to members. Come to preachers. When he comes, he brings guidance. When he comes, he brings direction. When he comes, he brings empowerment. I have many things to tell you now, Jesus said, but ye cannot bear them. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He says he will guide you. He will guide you. He will take up that which is of me and he will give it unto you. The Holy Ghost is responsible for the signs and the wonders that you see the Holy Ghost is responsible for kingdom influence you can be as true and as right as you are but except the power of the Holy Ghost is upon you you may not do much in this kingdom for the race is not to the swift the Bible declares the battle is not for the song mm -mm. I learned the excellency of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and I forever hold his hands. My life is useless without him. He is a factor. That one factor. Bringing you into a dimension of spiritual reality. Please listen to me. We need to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the extraordinary factor in a man's life God making ordinary men to become supernatural let the Holy Spirit be involved in your business and you will be surprised what will come out of your life let the Holy Spirit be involved in your ministry believe me I know what I'm saying let the Holy Spirit be involved in your family and you will marvel and wonder at the superior dimensions that his presence can bring in one minute, wherever you are, I'd like you to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I need you afresh. I need you afresh. Let it be a genuine prayer. Are you praying? I need you afresh. Hallelujah. Listen. Write this down very quickly. There are four benefits of encounter with the Holy Spirit and we we'll stop here for today. We'll take the other encounters tomorrow morning. Do the best that you can as much as God grants you grace to follow or be around. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit is that he's the revealer of the world. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the world. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 and 12. 
Write it down because of time. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 and 12. The Bible says, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Read on. The Bible says, verse 10 now, but God had revealed them. So they are no longer a mystery. God had revealed them to us. How? By his spirit. It says, for the spirit has the ability to search all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Next verse. The Bible says, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. So also, no man can know the things of God except the spirit of God. You read down to verse 12. The Bible says now, hallelujah, not later, not tomorrow, now. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God to the end that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. A revealer of the secrets and the mysteries of God. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the confirmer of the word. The Holy Spirit, it is within his office. Even though the Holy Spirit still plays a role in your new birth experience, there is a separate encounter with his office. And the Bible says he's the confirmer of the word. Isaiah 44 from verse 24 and 26. Isaiah 44 from verse 24 and 26. The key verse is verse 26. The Bible says, Can we see 26? It says, That confirmed the word of his servants. I'm hurrying up because of time. Read from 24 to 26. He says, He performs the counsel of his messengers. So if I speak like I did to this gentleman, I do not have that kind of power to impart any grace. But the Holy Ghost is a confirmer. The Holy Ghost is the seal. He validates that it's truly God that sent you. Number three, this is an important one. When you encounter the Holy Ghost, you have encountered the custodian of the anointing. The administration of the anointing is in the office of the Holy Spirit. Please listen to this. Isaiah 61, you can read that. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Please give it to us. Just write Isaiah 61 for reference. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power, but it came by the Spirit of the Lord. Every other spiritual practice and perhaps religion does not depend on relationship for power. For instance, if you go to meet a herbalist, you don't need to know his name. He doesn't need to know your name. You don't need to know where he's from. You just tell him, I need power, maybe for some political thing or whatever it is. And he conjures something and gives you. It is only the faith life that requires relationship for power. Your power is a derivative of your relationship. Are we together? He is the custodian of the anointing. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power, the Bible says. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive power, not before. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, he precedes the power. That power will make you witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Number four, the Holy Spirit represents the voice of God. Write that down. The Holy Spirit represents the voice of God to the believer. First Timothy chapter four and verse one. Apostle Paul mentoring his son in the gospel, Timothy. He had this to say. He says, but the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, he said, some shall depart from the faith Do you like prayer? He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We are going to pray for a few minutes. 
just two prayer points number one is the grace for many of you who are yet to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ soon after this prayer I'll make an altar call before I minister and then for those who have encountered the Lord Jesus Christ you are going to pray that the benefits of salvation he said bless the Lord oh my soul forget not his benefits there are benefits you are going to pray that the benefits of salvation become real in your life and then number two the ministry of the Holy Spirit becomes real in your life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray just for a few minutes and we're done for tonight is someone praying all the overflows please pray those following us from all over the globe online pray this is the time to pray the benefits that come with the encounter of the son of the living god the life of god access to righteousness the reality of the workings of his grace peace that surpasses all understanding Are you praying? Pray for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God in a fresh dimension. I embrace you, I embrace your ministry. I embrace you, I embrace your ministry. I embrace you, I embrace your ministry. I embrace you in my ministry. I embrace you in my life. Pray. I embrace you in my business. I embrace you in leadership. I embrace you in government. You may be a politician here. Yeah, pray. You may be a father in the land. Pray. You may be a diplomat, a career person, an industrialist. Pray. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Transforming the plateau to a sign and a wonder. Pray for your church, man of God. Spirit of the living God, I introduce you afresh to my assembly to house on the rock just to the body of Christ ac across the plateau in a new way let the wind of the spirit come hallelujah listen I believe with all my heart that God is doing something from tonight. Lord, pour out your spirit on all the people in this land. Let your sons and daughters speak. Your words of prophecy Send us dreams and visions Reveal the secrets of your heart Lord, our faith is rising Let Creation, see the coming of your name. There's gonna be a great awakening. It's a prophecy for Plato. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus they will be saved for Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no water Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer 
For the world today Above him there's no other Listen to me We have but a few minutes tonight And all across this large auditorium This, this theater, this space The main church All of the extensions inside and outside There are people listening to me right now and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that you have to win this war of destiny tonight. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Listen to me. In order of priority, the greatest and most superior encounter in your life is that encounter with the Son of the living God. Every other thing that we do here tonight and for the days that come, that follow, is absolutely inferior to this one encounter. There are people scattered across. Whilst you heard me speak, the Holy Ghost began to convict you that it is time for you to take Jesus serious. It's time for you to make that one decision. Embracing the life of Jesus. Acknowledging his lordship. This is beyond church. This is beyond religion. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. Now very quickly, I am going to count one to ten. And you are here, you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to make this noble decision, I am unashamed and I am ready to stand before Jesus. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here. One. Are you celebrating Jesus? Two. Run to Jesus. Saburai Kapani Nagode Cheto Kapani. Run to Jesus. Don't be ashamed of Jesus tonight. Sujada nena Godia nena ke Suchada nena ke Godia nena This is a part of the song I like we sing that song Kai ka share hawa ye Kai ka ba Jesus, run to Jesus. Now listen to me. Coming to Jesus is not like coming to a funeral. No. Coming to Jesus is exchanging your weakness for his strength. Exchanging your limitation for his power. Every one of us who celebrate the faith life today have to make this decision. I salute every one of you and for those of you who are following online I'd like you to open up your heart and connect it matters 
that we participate in the global harvest. Someday Jesus is coming back. I announce to you again, life will not continue like this indefinitely. A day will come when the trumpet will sound. I assure you it will happen. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. One more time and I lead you to this prayer. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Now listen to me. All of you who are standing here, my God, such a strong presence of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to lift your right hand here at House on the Rock, Joss. And I want to lead you to Jesus. The Bible declares that whosoever comes to him will not perish, regardless the past, regardless the limitations. Jesus gives us new life. I want you to say this prayer from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is right here at this crusade ground. Are you ready to pray? Very loud and very clear to your own hearing. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised up for my justification. This night, I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness into my spirit. And I declare, based on the authority of scripture, that from tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I am saved. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Years ago, I remember watching Reinhard Bonke of Blessed Memory making this decision. I was somewhere in the crowd when he was making that call. And today he's joining the cloud of witnesses in heaven and seeing as this noble ministry continues even after his departure. Listen to me. You have made the noblest decision in your life. And I congratulate you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, there are a group of counselors. Please, can you wave your hands? Now, the counselors are waving their hands. There are a number of you, but all of you in concert. I want you to obediently follow the man leading you. You're going to be taken somewhere. You may be given a few materials, and then they'll just admonish you for a few minutes and you quickly join us god bless you let's honor them plateau just is this the best you can do celebrate them as they as they go I have a few minutes. We'll soon be out of here. 
I want to pray and speak over someone's life. Yes, Yes, Sing it for me. Celebrate Jesus, I'm about to pray for you. I'd like you to pray everything that must leave your life this night not tomorrow this night here at this 19th anniversary please believe i'd like you to open your mouth in one minute and pray lift your voice and pray that one thing that must leave your life for sure it says say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you lift your voice and pray Glad to pray. North Central pray. Nigeria pray. Africa pray. Call unto me and I will answer, the Bible declares. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah. Now, this is what will happen. We still have other days, so we're not going to delay. But we have a few minutes, and I just feel third in my spirit just to speak a prayer. And then, whatever happens tonight, I may not have the time to prophesy and speak because our time is gone and we have to respect time so that we're back to our homes. But then, I know that someone will leave this place completely transformed. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Now I want to pray. Please do me a favor. Whoever falls under the anointing close to you, if you can do me a favor, whether you're an usher or not, please bring them here. We have just five minutes. Praise the Lord. There are people here who are under oppressions of darkness. Listen to me. My Bible declares. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, annihilate, liquidate. Don't just come out at random. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for you. And the moment I pray for you, inside, outside, everywhere, the power of God will come and bring life and liberty. For the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit, it says. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Are you ready to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, when I'm praying, I'm going to give you an instruction to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout that name that is above every other name, every demon and every devil on the plateau that will not let you rest must give way. Lord, I pray that you honor your word. Here at House on the Rock, here at just plateau, it's time to experience liberty. Therefore, I declare, in the name of Jesus, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us 
the Bible declares that he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, we place a sanction in the realm of the spirit to principalities and powers, ordinances of darkness, tying down the destinies of men. It's time for you to go. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. As you shout that name, every chain that has held you bound must let you go. Are you ready to shout? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command those chains. Go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. I cause yokes of darkness. In the name of Jesus, every oppression, bring them out. My God, shake it, take it, take it out. Families must be delivered right now. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, every victim of oppression, of darkness, hear the word of the Lord. I come by the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare in the name of Jesus, be delivered now for upon Mount Zion, help them. There shall be deliverance and holiness. Every spirit tying down any destiny, any spirit tying down families, it's time for you to go. Shanda Branda Skalika Tosiata Embrakate, help them please. Don't allow them to disturb our, our excellencies here, please. Let's have a few protocol people just stand to make sure that they do not this. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. Look up, please. Hear me. There are families under the sound of my voice. It looks like nobody is able to rise. Just when you are about to rise. There are powers that bring you down. But right now, in the name of Jesus, any family under any kind of captivity, right now, I command those powers, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. Bring them out. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, so that no man doth lift up his head. Psalm 3. He says, how many are they that rise up against me? Many are they that say, where is your God? He said, but thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. He calls him my glory. I prophesy again. The power of God is coming upon you. Any family here, under the sound of my voice, that have been oppressed by spirits, I'm saying it again. Be delivered right now. Release your destinies now. Release your families now. Someone open your mouth in one minute. Begin to declare. I'm a child of God. Everything stolen from my life. I command recovery. Relationships. Opportunities. Are you praying? Please don't be silent. And I will restore to you the years. Declare. My family. we're wrapping up we're exalting Jesus in this place I pray for everyone who is out here every spirit that has tied your life you know my voice I come as one sent by Elohim in the name of Jesus at the count of three get out of their lives now one two three go 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 out of their destinies out of their destinies out of their families we give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. So we bow down, we bow down, highest praise to the King. So 
glory lifts up holy hands. Always praise to the King. Zoe Maka Suchada. Look at me. We are not just wasting time here. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that these people return with. He said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Let me speak to you. Every door that has refused to open over your life, I come tonight by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I speak to every closed door. Hear the word of the Lord. A father be open hither and thither. Doors of opportunities be open now. Every closed door be open now. Doors in ministry, doors in business be open now. Including those I'm seeing outside, outside the building there. I command those doors open in the name of Jesus. Hear me. For everyone that has come for this meeting, between now and tomorrow morning, believe me, I stand by the God of my covenant and I declare you return with strange testimonies. Hear me. For many of you, you will go to bed this night and the secrets of your destiny will be open to you. The Lord will show you your place in destiny. For some of you tonight, you are receiving divine direction. It will come in dreams and visions. Now, let me prophesy. If there is any power on the plateau fighting the gospel, if there is any power on the plateau fighting the advancement of men, all earth I speak to you I speak to the elements of the supernatural let tonight be a night of judgment and every family that is here to, to experience liberty on the plateau I declare by the Spirit of God it begins from tonight in the name of Jesus all of you who are out here, I declare you completely delivered by the spirit of grace. You can register. We may not have time to take testimonies, but I'm sure that there is a link or there is a, a committee that you'll be able to register your testimonies. Tomorrow morning and the subsequent sessions, I'm going to be praying for the sick. Please, I want you to make up your mind that you're going to participate in all the sessions and do well to come with someone, even if they will sit on the fence. The fence will not break. God is bringing a visitation to the plateau. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord honor you. And see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.